Welcome to Nord News. Today is Friday, March 17th, St. Patty's Day, and I'm your host, Kristen McDonald. It is great to have you with us as we end another week here in Norwood. This week on Nord News, Chief Brooks updates us on a stolen vehicle. We head on over to the juice bar to learn all about healthy fast food. But first, we kick off this St. Patrick's Day with a celebration at the Nord Senior Center. NCM talked to director Carrie McCarthy and attendee Marian Bulger about the day and what the best part about it is. I remember the time my granddad and I would sit by the fire at night. Today is our annual St. Patrick's Day luncheon. Well, these have been placed long before me. Um, we did have a pause in uh, 2021, but we're back and there's, as you can see, the room is packed. Just so we can have another excuse to get together, have fun, and celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Just seeing everyone together and having a good time. It's really important for them to get out and socialize, and this is the place to do it. Send me off to school, I'll learn how to read and to write. I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm very Irish and um, they do such a great job and Carrie is amazing, absolutely amazing. Put this together and it looks great. Being with my friends, you know, just seeing everybody. I was away for about four weeks and I never knew I could miss the senior center so much. That's what I told my kids, I missed the senior center. Tuesday morning, Norwood police received a call from a guest at the Courtyard Marriott that a man with a gun was threatening to kill him. This call later led to a chase of a stolen vehicle that ended on Brookline Ave in Boston. Chief Brooks gives NCM the exclusive. Hi, I'm Chief Bill Brooks of the Norwood Police Department. I'm here to talk to you about an event that happened on Tuesday at the Courtyard Marriott on Route 1. Uh, we received a call a little after 9 o'clock from a man who said that he was threatened by another man with a firearm. And uh, this is a man who he had rented a room with, so they, they knew each other. Um, the, a lot of the, the facts were unclear still. Our officers responded, um, found the caller on, on the third floor, um, really trying to stay away from the, the, other, the other subject. And um, he gave a similar statement that he had been threatened and uh, the other man had a firearm. So um, we brought more officers to the scene, um, command staff, uh, detectives, and so forth. Uh, we set a perimeter around the building so that we would uh, catch this guy if he tried to leave. And then we also set about emptying rooms. And there were a whole bunch of uh, electrical workers there from down south who were here for the predicted storm. Uh, we had to evacuate them from their rooms and put them someplace else. We wanted to make sure that if a shot was fired, uh, that no one was hit. Um, we then tried to call into the room, and we were getting no answer. Uh, we then knocked on the door, uh, and again, we got no answer. Uh, then using a pass key, we made our way into the room uh, to see if the subject was there, to see if he indeed had a firearm and to see if he had harmed himself. We found the room empty, but in plain view was some cocaine. Now, we had reason to believe there was a firearm in the room, and we had just seen drugs in the room, so we immediately secured the room, uh, backed out, and the detectives, uh, specifically Detective Paul Ryan, came back and wrote a search warrant affidavit, drove to the Dedham District Court, obtained a search warrant, and uh, went back to the room and searched it. Um, we recovered the cocaine that we had seen, and also during a search we did find the firearm, which was a Smith & Wesson 9mm semi-automatic. And uh, the detectives obviously took custody of that. Um, around the same time, around the time that we were clearing the hotel, uh, a stolen vehicle report came in. Now, it was a little unusual. It came from Sunnyside Road, which is a very, very low crime neighborhood. Um, and we don't get a lot of stolen vehicles anyway, other than uh, rentals or cars off lots. Uh, <clears throat> and this was about one mile uh, from the Courtyard Marriott. So uh, when our officers started looking for this, for this it was a van, um, budget drains, it said on the side. 
uh, we were contacted by the company to tell us that they had GPS on that, on that van and they could give us locations. So they began to give us locations and, and as they did, um, our units caught up with the van around the Westwood Norwood line. Um, they attempted to pull it over, um, the vehicle cut out of traffic, operated at a high rate of speed into the Islington section of Westwood and when the officers got to about the Roach Brothers area, uh, they terminated the pursuit out of public safety concerns. Um, but using the GPS, um, we were able to direct Boston and state police to the location of, of the van as it drove down through Dedham and then down eventually through the VFW Parkway, uh, the Jamaica Way, then onto the Riverway, uh, and eventually down onto Brookline Avenue in the area of Fenway Park, where state and Boston police um, stopped it. Uh, we arrived at the scene, we told state and Boston police um, that uh, that van had been stolen from the area um, where we were on a gun call, and, and sure enough, uh, the man driving the van, man by the name of uh, Jason DeVoe, um, was the other subject from the hotel room, and he was placed under arrest by uh, state police and booked on receiving, receiving a stolen motor vehicle. We've also charged DeVoe, who is from Florida, with a negligent operation and failure to stop for a police officer. So he was booked by uh, state police. He was held on uh, $10,000 bail. Uh, Mr. Jimenez, who we had brought here to the station, who was the man who originally made the call, that was, um, we would allege is responsible, partly responsible for the drugs in the hotel room. He was also held here at the station on uh, $10,000 bail. You know, fortunately, I think restraint on our part restraint by state and Boston police um, in, um, in their eventual ability to, to get this uh, van stopped and to arrest the, the operator and to recover a gun on a gun threat call without any shots being fired and without anybody being injured. I just think that um, our department really performed well, as did uh, Boston and state police. Are you tired from eating unhealthy meals or just want to try something new? Well, NCM stopped by and chatted with Marcy Pastorio, owner of The Juice Bar, on this week's Living Local. I'm Marcy. I am the owner of The Juice Bar. I live here in Norwood, um, and we've been in business for six years now. Located at the corner of Nahatton and Broadway, The Juice Bar, specializing in healthy fast food, has found its home in Norwood. You can come and you get your healthy food. Um, we don't um, add anything but what nature gives us to any of our uh, recipes. Um, and we are a place where you can have a healthy option when you're on the go or on your daily basis. You can make sure you will eat healthy. On a trip that I did a few years back, um, I visited a first juice bar in my life. I always juice for myself and I wondered if that country had a a place where I could get a green juice. So we found out um, there was one two blocks away from our hotel. We were sitting there and I looked at my husband and I said, I think I'm gonna open up a juice bar. I don't think he believed me at first. He's like, all right, whatever. Um, but I came back and within a month, I researched everything there was to juice bars. And um, so I was ready. I was like, all right, let's do this. but. How am I going to get customers through the door? And that's when my husband, who's a local police officer here in Norwood, said, uh, why don't you reach out to Charlotte from Charles River Running Store? And uh, she's a very uh, big in community, and I think she can help. And that's what I did, and Charlotte uh, was amazing. She brought all her running club to the juice bar on day one that we opened. And the word of mouth just spread and everybody, the whole community, the whole town actually embraced the whole concept of the juice bar because it was something that the town didn't have. And it's, it, was, it was a great idea. It was like, okay, let's bring some healthy food to our, to our town. And everybody just started from, from the rec department all the way to the other local businesses. Um, they all reached out and they, they came, they, they helped me. You guys from NCM came and you did amazing because of all of you, we're here today. While Marcy will be the first to tell you that everything is good at the juice bar, there is one item on the menu that seems to be the favorite amongst her customers. I think that um, the majority of our customers come for the acai bowl. 
So I come from the Amazon and I grew up eating acai. And the closest you will get to the Amazon taste of an acai, it would be with us. So we have 100% organic acai, nothing added to it. There's only three ingredients that goes into our bowls, into our base. Um, any other place that you go, they mix a bunch of berries, almond milk, and a lot of other stuff that becomes actually a smoothie in a bowl. Ours, the acai, is actually acai. So you are getting the whole benefits of this amazing fruit, which is considered a super fruit. And we make sure that every day the, the base is made fresh. So I have a person who comes in every day at four in the morning to prepare the base for the day. So it's never from the day before, it's always made for that day. So you're always gonna get fresh acai. It's, it's such a, a specialty fruit that if mishandled, you lose, you lose the properties. So that's why we only buy 100% organic, quick frozen puree. Because that way, we're, we're gonna serve you all the nutrients that this rich berry has to offer. Marcy would love to expand and have a juice bar in every town, but there's nothing she loves more than being right here in Norwood. A lot of people from other towns, they do come to me and they're like, Marcy, why don't you open up somewhere else? Or, oh, you should franchise this. And I, it is my dream, but Norwood is where I started and it's where my, my roots went deep because the whole community just came and embraced me. And it was more than just, um, helping each other out. It was loving me, it was accepting me, it was rooting for me. And um, being a mom, like during like sports seasons and all that, I'm always glad to bring like smoothies for the team, you know? Like, hey, do you guys want something pre-game or something? So it's good to, to be able to give that, give that a little bit, just the whole, idea of being in my town and being here and seeing all the young kids come in and, and enjoying a healthy meal, a healthy um, choice instead of going to a fast food restaurant. Um, just being able to serve even the older people who come in and they say, look, I have diabetes and my doctor told me to eat healthy. And I have people who have been coming every day and um, I also have people who says, Marcy, since I started eating here, my cholesterol went down. And I get messages all the time like, Marcy, I ate my bowl today and I literally felt loved. And I told them that's because we make it with so much love that we want you to feel that. So there are just those testimonies that come, you know, throughout the years that you're doing something right, that it's it's what you're meant to be doing. And especially here in Norwood, because my kids are in Norwood, they're in the Norwood schools, and it makes me um, not just glad, but uh, blessed to be able to serve my community with a healthy option. The juice bar is open Monday to Friday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Marcy and her staff are looking forward to serving the Norwood community healthy food options and doing it with a smile. I know what I'm having for lunch. Coming up on Norwood News, Charlie Donahue presents a special painting to the selectmen. We time travel back in history and we celebrate Chief Hayes after 39 years on the fire department. Attention Norwood residents, your local election is coming up fast. The election is on April 3rd, and it includes voting for Board of Selectmen, Town Moderator, Board of Health, School Committee, Finance Commission, Constable, Library Board of Trustees, and Planning Board. If you want to find out who wins, NCM will be at the Town Hall reporting the results live, so tune in to our community channel at 8 o'clock on April 3rd. Get your dancing shoes on, Norwood Dancing with the Stars will be back on April 7th. If you're not going to be at the Four Points to watch, make sure to tune in to the NCM Community Channel or stream it on our website. The event begins at 8 p.m. The winner is Tracy Curran. Class of 61 graduate and NHS Hall of Famer Charlie Donahue is known for giving back to his hometown of Norwood in many ways. 
One way, which many residents may know, is to raise money for scholarships for future teachers. Donahue contacts local artist Thomas Dunlay and commissions him to paint scenic landscapes of Norwood. These paintings usually feature young hockey players in the foreground, a nod to Donahue's love of the game. At the Selectman's meeting this week, Donahue, along with Dunley and beloved retired NHS Music Department Chair Paul Alberta, unveiled Dunley's latest portrait of Norwood celebrating the Pops performance held last summer, commemorating the town's 150th anniversary. So anyway, uh, I want to thank Helen and many of you for bringing something very unique to Boston Pops, the Norwood Town Green. I couldn't believe it when I first heard about it. I said, you know, this has to be the only town that's ever had it reminds me of going to some of the, the uh, luncheons of the Friends of St. Nick. And the Boston Dana Faba people come out and they say, this is the only town that we come out and thank the town for donating money to us. You know, no, it is unusual. You, know, you people have such spirit to give this kind of money to Dana Faba. So anyway, so when we heard this was coming out, I asked Thomas <coughs> if he'd be available. I live in Westwood, a mile over the line. I, I wish 35 years ago, 40 years ago, I hadn't moved to Norwood. I feel more, you know, akin to Norwood than I do uh, Westwood, um, especially now that I have my school down at the Winston Mill. Um, but it just, uh, uh, you know, I, I think what Charlie does with these pictures is, is an incredible idea. Uh, Charlie and Nancy you know, raising money for the high school scholarship fund and also giving everybody a memory of, you know, the different parts of Norwood, the common, the high school, um, and you know, now, now the pops, which I, as I really understand, uh, Helen is the, was the driving force. Edna, behind. big committee, big, oh, big committee. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, I think I see Miss Alberta. Now let's throw it over to Brian McKenzie with School News. I'm Brian McKenzie, and let's take a look at some activities happening in our Norwood schools this week. In Coakley Middle School News, 8th graders Joy Robinson and Sophie Brogadier, members of the National Junior Honor Society, met with health phys ed teacher Paul Nimblett and asked for help in organizing a basketball tournament to honor the memory of Tyler Lawrence. Tyler was a CMS student who was tragically killed last month. Tyler loved basketball, and they all agreed it would be a great way to remember him. The tournament spanned over two weeks with three divisions, 6th grade, 7th grade, and 8th grade, with teachers. There were over 33 teams and over 100 participants, including students and faculty. The National Junior Honor Society helped with the registrations and then Blett scheduled the games through the first two weeks of March. The finals were held last Friday in front of a packed gym filled with the entire 7th grade and all the participants. Two web cameras were set up in the gym so the entire school could watch the tournament in their classrooms. It was a school-wide effort with the teachers and students helping out, doing the score during games, and officiating. During the week, the students also sold wristbands to raise money as well. The money raised will be used for a bench with a plaque in Tyler's memory. Tyler's mother, Remy Lawrence, and his grandfather, Stanley, attended the game and were very thankful for the support they had received from the Coakley and the Norwood community. To my dad and I, this, this game today meant more than I can articulate in words. Um, I am incredibly thankful for the community here at the Coakley. I am incredibly thankful to the town of Norwood. Um, everyone in this town who knew Tyler and didn't know Tyler um, has shown up and have poured into us. And so I am just really um, thankful and, and blessed. And I feel um, really confident that my son's legacy will continue to live on, um, not only here at the Coakley, but in this town as well, because yes. Tyler loved Norwood. Um, so thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Special thanks to the students and staff at Coakley Middle School for working together to remember one of their own. In Norwood High School news, in the robotics lab, United States Navy Petty Officers Jackson and Hudson gave an excellent presentation related to how the U.S. Navy uses nuclear power to the honors engineering students. Dr. Mike Crowley takes great pride in how well his students perform on the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Test 
and all of us are prouder than many NHS alums who are serving in various branches of the military. And congratulations to Norwood High Students of the Month, Eve Andrews and Caroline Boussier. The Balch School celebrated March's National Reading Month with guest readers invited to the Balch by librarian Christine Duffy. Students in all grades were visited by community leaders and NPS leaders. Some of our readers included Police Chief Brooks, Officer Fisk, Officer Baguma, Firefighter Ronco, Superintendent Dr. Thompson, Tech Director Joe Kidd, Manager of TV Video Jack Tolman, and many more valued Norwood School leaders. Students were delighted with readers sharing both personal anecdotes in addition to reading a story. Christine Duffy would like to thank the adults who helped celebrate reading, the teachers for their flexibility, and Principal Diane Ferreira for her support in preparing the special event. Special thank you to Bulch Reading teacher Courtney Cavanaugh for her support and contribution of photos. Finally, Christine Duffy thanks the students for giving their attention and behavior. At the Callahan School, Christine Miranda and Jill Woods' classes participated in Massachusetts Civic Learning Week and attended the Discovering Justice Zoom with a judge event. Judges talked to students about our justice system and answered questions. Jill Woods' class was picked amongst many classes in the state to ask a question. Author, illustrator, Cleveland alumni, and Nord resident Scott San Giacomo visited the Cleveland School as part of the school's March Readathon. Students collaborated in the creation of cartoon characters and learned about graphic novels, drawing, and believing in yourself. San Giacomo captivated the Cleveland students with his engaging presentations and sent this creative thank you drawing to the school. The Cleveland also welcomed the mystery readers who came to celebrate reading this month. Students enjoy entertaining readings from police officer Baguma and McDonough, and firefighters Kariga, Ronco, Rose, and Chisholm. There were surprising and welcome appearances from former Cleveland principal Mrs. Nancy Coppola and reading specialist Ann Watson. The students at the Oldham School had the pleasure of seeing the amazing Tanglewood Marionettes perform. The show was called The Dragon King and the tale is about a terrible drought that has overtaken the land and all the world has turned brown and lifeless. The Dragon King is a ruler over all things water and the people wonder why he has not brought the life-giving rains in such a very long time. Based on Chinese folklore, the Dragon King was exciting and the students really enjoyed the performance, especially at the end when the dragon entered the audience and sprayed water. Everyone was seeing green at Little Mustangs Preschool this week. Green footprints and shamrocks, that is. Classrooms were busy learning their letters by going on shamrock hunts around the school and participating in sink slash float activities with gold coins and tubs of water. After reading the How to Catch a Leprechaun story, preschoolers use engineering and problem solving skills to design and build some elaborate leprechaun traps. Open-ended activities like this help develop problem solving skills and also encourages collaboration, teamwork, and language development as they share ideas with their peer partners. No, the leprechaun came there. Did the leprechaun come to our... Who made the mess of the chairs? The... Who, who, who was knocking things over? Thomas, leprechaun. was that you? Did you do that? No. Lucy, did leprechaun. you do that? No. It was oh. a leprechaun! Do you think the leprechaun was in our classroom? Yeah! yeah. Clues! Wow! Clues! 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 What is going on? Oh. <gasps> Despite their best efforts, the children's traps came up empty again this year. While they may not have been lucky in catching a leprechaun, they sure had fun trying. Well, that's it for school news. The students are always learning, and thanks to educators who share the school news with us. Let's go back to Kristen for some more Norwood news. Thanks, Brian. Last August, Norwood News featured George Curtis from the Norwood Historical Society and their This Day in History, where they are dedicated to preserving and sharing Norwood's history. On March 13th, the Norwood Historical Society shared how the Father Max Poole came to be. On Monday, March 13, 1959, Mrs. Mary Dempsey of 4-1 Florence Avenue, acting spokesman for the group, presented the board with a petition containing more than 900 names requesting the funds for the pool be made available at the next special town meeting. The board expressed sympathy with the idea, but some members questioned the possibility of getting such a large appropriation through a special town meeting with the annual town meeting only a few weeks away. After much discussion with the board, the selectman Walter Dempsey made the suggestion, which was finally adopted by the board. He moved that the special town meeting already scheduled for March 27th be postponed until the same evening as the annual adjourned town meeting in April. He felt that the additional weeks gained would enable the town engineering department to make the necessary studies and cost estimates. 
To see more about this day in history, please visit the Nord Historical Society website at nordhistoricalsociety.org. Nord News will be right back after this break. With the town election quickly approaching on April 3rd, the League of Women Voters will be holding their annual Candidates Forum on Monday, March 20th at 7 p.m. The forum will be live on Nord Community Media's Community Channel. You can also stream the event live on the Community Livestream at norwoodcommunitymedia.org. The planning board met on Monday night. Attorney David Hearn requested that the public hearing of the subdivision plan for 76 Prospect Street be moved to the April 24th meeting, which was approved by the board. FM Global also requested a special permit for a major project where FM Global would have a campus added to it. The board motioned and approved to continue the hearing at the April 10th meeting. The Board of Selectmen held a joint budget review meeting with the Finance Commission Tuesday night. Both boards and town department heads, who joined the meeting virtually, reviewed the entire FY23 budget. This budget needs to be approved by both boards before closing the warrants for the annual town meeting, which is set to be held on May 8th. While it took just under two hours to get through the entire budget, it was a great collaboration of resources that kept this part of the budget process running smoothly. I was trying to compare to FY21 numbers, and that makes sense for some departments like police and fire, but it doesn't make sense for other departments because we moved facilities in FY22, and then in FY23 we moved water and sewer, and so there's no year that you can say, all right, it's the same accounting and you can Absolutely. compare it's directly. Absolutely, it's been a little messy. I would guess Public Works probably has one more year. If you think about it, facilities more or less took us till this year to kind of get it settled out. And there's still little things that we're finding that need to get adjusted. But I think this year there was $800 booked in the library budget that didn't need to, that should have been a facilities cost. Mm -hmm. So we're only really finding very small things. You remember that first year or two, it was a nightmare. We're like, oops, there's $50,000 here that should have been somewhere else. So right. Public Works probably will take one more year to fully sort of cycle out. We got to see how the Enterprise Fund does at the end of the year and see if we're you know, if the expenses are matching up to the revenues, but we'll probably about another year from cycling off, which might be the time to say, we've got to kind of reset this, agree on what our numbers are, and then move forward from there. Following the budget meeting, the selectmen held a second joint meeting with the planning board. The group discussed the process of setting up a town master plan steering committee. A couple of points worth uh, making. Uh, the Economic Development Commission is a body appointed by this board, which is elected by the public to represent the interests of the town. The zoning board is appointed by this board, elected to represent the interests of uh, the town of Norwood. The Conservation Commission is an appointment by the manager, ratified by this board, which is elected to select to represent the public. The six residents at large are being selected by a committee of three who are elected officials. So I think there's about as much democratic uh, input in the process as you can have. Yes, the Zoning Board and the Conservation Commission and the Economic Development Commission are appointed by elected bodies. They play <coughs> critical roles in land use. And while a master plan isn't just about land use, that is a significant portion of what the plan uh, ends up doing. So that's where you're going to need to see that input because it's also in time out, uh, over time going to have a significant impact on those boards and the work that they do. But what they will be doing is they'll be discussing zoning and zoning should be uh, an issue that's decided by the town meeting membership. It, 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 it is. It absolutely will be. This is a master plan steering committee to steer the process of developing a master plan. You're probably looking at uh, a dozen or two dozen or three dozen design charrettes and community meetings and involvement. This is just the committee that's steering that process. That'll set up those meetings and run the process. <laughs> and uh, this would be an advisory board. And like the MBTA the, uh, task force, we do the, the, the hard work, the dirty work, the, the, and, and they report back to the planning board as progress is being made. And the planning board will still be overseeing it, and I envision this the same way. And then at some point, we will meet with the board of selectmen and eventually go to town meeting. And I, so I, I think the makeup of the board, the way Mr. Mazzucco has it laid out, works. During his manager's agenda, Tony Mizuko announced that longtime director of the purchasing department, Kathy Carney, will be retiring this spring. Uh, then the only other one I wanted to talk about um, is that Kathy Carney will be retiring. Whoa! She has been with us for um, 38 years. I was initially a little surprised when she told me today, and then she reminded me she's been telling me for two years. Mm -hmm. um, I even know what she's going to gonna do in part time. She's wanted to sell flowers, and, and she told me that. Uh, I then tried to tell Kathy that I think she was um, she hasn't been with us long enough to retire. 
She reminded me I was five year five weeks old when she started with the town. So she has served us loyally for thirty eight years, and um, she'll uh, her last day is sometime in April, and we are going to miss her um, miss her terribly. Your Town at Work, hosted by Jerry Slater, highlights the inner workings and the people that help make the town tick. On the latest episode, Jerry sat down with Human Resources Director Lisa Ugliaro and new Recreation Superintendent John Kenny. The full show will be airing on the NCM Community Channel in the coming weeks. Oh, with, with our awesome Recreation Department, I, I, one of the things I've always said was that this town, the programs that we bring to the residents of this town is like so so many programs and uh, so much variety f that you know for the size town that Norwood is in comparison to other bigger towns that have less it's it's quite overwhelming it's it's fantastic so it's a big credit to the team that's already down there at the rec and I'm just hoping that I can support them and, and continue the the successes that they've had now you, you, you mentioned the team down there and for folks that may not know we you know I know how are you still there yep uh, take us take us through your 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 team um, so I have Howie Sam and Allison that are down there uh, amongst um, a number of part-time staff that uh, you know what I've I've said to the group coming in is that you know I don't look to come in and just change the wheel you know it's been running fine um, and I'm a total team player from the person that works two hours a day to the person that's you know there over time because we have special events running in, in the in the town so everybody's uh, opinions and feedback are very important um, to the whole process down there and you know if somebody has you know some feedback or, or opinions about you know we could do this a little bit better I'm all ears because you know change is a little bit scary sometimes but it's also good and I think that um, sometimes people get a little bit nervous, especially when there's some turnover and they're like, oh, geez, what's this guy going to do? What is, he, is he going to change everything? And, you know, that's not the case. We're just looking to improve where we can, um, offer as much as we can uh, to keep everybody from the little, little guys to all the way up, um, you know, as busy and as entertained. And, you know, if, if we've learned anything coming out of the COVID years, it's recreation is very very important you know the socialization just getting out there having fun with other people um, we need to continue to bring those things uh, to the residents of Norwood and everywhere so now uh, your team um, down at uh, Town Hall yep. tell us a little bit about that your team as well the members yeah of your team. so um, we the human resources department used to be at Town Hall um, but they moved um, sounds like a couple of years ago to 206 Central Street very important. I, we love visitors. Um, we have a great space. Um, it allows for some privacy, but also some good teamwork. Um, I work with some lovely ladies, um, Kelly Spencer, uh, Rosemary Meehan, Lorraine Hamway, and um, Janice Whitebreck. Janice is the newest addition. She is our liaison to the schools. Um, and she came after Wally left. Okay. Uh, everybody knows Wally. Everybody knows Wally. <laughs> so I'll just say Wally. Um, when Wally left, we um, did a search and we found Janice and she's a gem. And honestly, these people have so much knowledge and it's such a strong team. We can do whatever's necessary, but we're also human and really good to talk to. And so we encourage people to come and, and let us help you. Let us do whatever is necessary. So you realize that the reason I asked you that question yeah. is it was not so long ago, Lisa, yeah. that I would ask that question and it would be a party of one. Oh, it's true. true. And so, I mean, it's yeah. amazing what has happened over the last few years, and rightly so, in, in human resources in municipalities. Absolutely. There are still a number of towns that don't have human resources. And um, it's, a, it's a matter of risk management, actually. I mean, you have this huge investment, and if you don't have people looking out for it, never mind what it can do proactively and all the positives, if you don't have people looking out for it, you are really putting your town at, at risk, um, legal risk, financial risk. Um, so that's, uh, we take that part very seriously. We, we, don't, we don't want to put the town in a position where um, they, they can't handle something that comes up. We want to be knowledgeable and helpful. Um, so that risk management is critical. Um, 
when I brought human resources to the town of Cohasset, which they had not had it um, when I got there, um, that was part of the, the, the big reason why, was just to manage some of this, this risk. Um, and I, I keep that with me. That is an important part of my job. Um, but I also like the, the positive side of it, which is just helping people to be as successful as they can be. Earlier this month, Fire Chief David Hayes retired after 34 dedicated years at the Fire Department. The NFD Facebook page posted, The Nord Fire Department would like to congratulate Chief David Hayes on his recent retirement and thank him for his years of service to the town of Norwood. Chief Hayes' career at the Norwood Fire Department began on August 31, 1989 after serving in the Air Force and Navy as a firefighter during the 1970s and 1980s. He worked in Norwood as a firefighter and EMT until his promotion in 2011 to Lieutenant of Group 4. He was promoted to Deputy Chief in January of 2020 and then finally Chief on September 1, 2021. As Chief, David Hayes was instrumental in procuring numerous technological advances department-wide as well as incorporating them into day-to-day -day operations as both as a benefit to the town and firefighter safety. On behalf of the Nord Fire Department, we would like to wish Chief Hayes a happy and healthy retirement. Congratulations, Chief Hayes, on a great career, and thank you for your 39 years of service to the NFD and Town of Norwood. Well, that's all for Norwood News. To stay up to date with Norwood Community Media, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend and a great St. Patrick's Day.